Welcome back to Owlskerry, a remote farm in the Orkney Islands of Scotland. The island was my home throughout my childhood, living alongside a flock of rare breed sheep that eat seaweed. Our family have lived in this wild and beautiful place in the middle of the North Sea for nearly 50 years. And my parents' life's work has been built from our sheep's wool. In a previous video in this series, I showed how we hand shear every single one. And now it's time for the next stage in the wool production process. This is On To Other News, episode 9. So, you get a stone, you put the stone inside there, okay, and then you wrap the rope round it twice, I think. Simon, am I right? I really don't. It's like, Pardon not me. pull the end through, because you want to get it <laughs> undone. Classic. <laughs> Straight in the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Today's task is to sort all the fleeces from the shearing we've done this summer. For over 25 years, my parents have farmed a rare breed of native Orkney sheep called North Ronaldseys, or Rollies. They come in all different shades of colour, ranging from dark greys to golden brown, all of them with a completely unique pattern. This week we have help from my cousin Bertie and his wife Catherine, who live in England. When the wool sacks come back from processing on the UK mainland, they're always in a pretty bad state of repair. Catherine is stitching up the holes so we can pack the sacks with this year's wool. Will that just be based on the age of the sheep? Or... Yes, yeah, yeah, a lot to do with that and, and gender. My mum Teresa has always been in charge of the wool management. As you've seen in the series, she has a huge passion for sheep and very few people know more about fibres or wool quality than her. Under her supervision, we sort every fleece into broad colour categories. Our wool is processed into batches of light and dark grey, as well as a deep brown colour that we call peat. A lighter mix that we call shell sand combines the creamy white fleeces we have along with the caramel looking ones. If you want to see any of the final wool products, head over to my parents' website, isleofowlscary.com. The wool sack has to be fixed to the rafters before it's packed, but there's a special way of tying that involves stones. I don't know why, but it, what it does is it means that you can then undo it again. Otherwise, the weight in it, if you're jumping up and down with a lot, with, you know, with over 100 kilos plus you in it, mm. would mean we'd never get the knots undone again. Right, got it. Right, and I don't know who devised this method, but it will be old as the hills. As old as the hills, divide, by, devised by Hi. some wily old geezer, Highland shepherd <laughs> somewhere. Some geezer. So you've got to be very careful that you climb up in such a way that you don't, and there are nails sticking out. Because there are a lot of public expectancy yes. riding on you. I feel. No, no. My boots are getting even more leaden. Yes. Colours all sorted and all not secured. It's time to get in the sack. Every fleece is weighed so that we have an accurate weight calculation for each wool sack. It's quite hard work compacting all the fleeces so you can fit 100 kilos in. It's definitely a job for wearing a boiler suit and welly boots for because it's very greasy in there with all the lanolin, but it is quite a satisfying task all the same. I think your days of getting in, Simon, are really over. Really? I do. I think it's time to let the youngsters have some fun. You having fun? You can see that Catherine has made a good job of the stitching. It has to be pretty sturdy to cope with all the weight of the wool and about 85 kilos of me on a good day. 
Every year, this job always makes for a very full-on day. We have around 600 kilos of wool to pack, and because it has to be a dry day to sort all the fleeces outside, we can't afford to not get it done by early evening. With my cousin working at full speed to weigh and bring me the fleeces to pack in, it's a sweaty workout. I just want to say a thank you to all of you who've bought me a coffee on the link below. It really does mean a lot to me to have your support with the costs of making these videos. If you're new to my channel, please do like this video and subscribe for future episodes. I love seeing all your questions and comments too, so please keep them coming. Should we put this a bit closer? Are you happy? We can move the... No, I think it's okay. After we'd had a tea break, I sneakily suggested that maybe mum would like to have a go packing the next wool sack. Not one to ever use age as an excuse, Mum was all for it. So can you raise, can you raise this left, left knee it's, up? I'm trying to get my... You need your right knee to get further yeah, down. Yeah, I uh, do, that's it. Great. And then, I don't know if I'm actually helping. No, you are. You are, you are. That's yeah, it. Great. That's You're what in. I needed to do. You're in. You're in. Just You about. are in. If I can just get... Could you help this me one. get my foot Which to stand on top? There you are, you're on. You're on. You're on. You're on. This is exciting. <laughs> right, give me some fleeces, please. really because I haven't got enough in here. Was that five fleeces? Honestly. There's so many or not enough. No, it's just that it didn't feel as if there was enough to put into the corners. I was just thinking I was going to get... That is one of our biggest ever fibres. Really? Yeah. It will be embarrassing if it's me that makes the stitches rip. Is wouldn't it? That would give everyone a good laugh. It's the Wall Street Shuffle. Dun, dun, dun. What happens to this wall now, Mum? Once I've packed it and sent it off, it gets scoured. Then it gets carded and spun. And then it gets made into balls of wool. Uh, before coming home to be labelled and sold. And actually this year, the peat wool has been incredibly popular and it's sold like hot cakes. Oh, yeah. Ow! You are. Right? I'm just done to myself. I would, if I were you, walk up and down facing left and right rather than the beams. And how's it to be back in the wool sack again? Um, it feels very familiar. I've been doing this for 40 years. First time I did it was at Hoosby when I first came to Orkney at the age of 19. But the sacks were much longer and thinner then. And it was much more scary getting in and out. Well, not out, but it, we were much higher in the roof when you got out again at the top. I haven't done it a lot the last, well, when you were all kids, I never did it. Dad got in the sack then because I had to be in charge of children and wool. So I haven't been in the sack very often the last few years. And I'm quite looking forward to getting back out again as soon as I get some wool. <laughs> But um, you've done a sterling effort on all the other bags, so I'm just really getting in the sack this time so that I can justify having a shower when we get home. <laughs> because anyone who hasn't been in the sack will be lower in the queue. <laughs> Thank you, my man. God, that really is big. Oh, and you have a lot of them, isn't it? Can I get your leg over then to push them into the right place? Oh, to get your leg over? <laughs> when you're in the sack. <laughs> when you're in the sack. Oh my gosh. With everything packed in, all there's left to do is to sew up the bags. All the packed bags in the garage is a very satisfying sight. 
precision sewing here. Well, you're doing a very good job, but I mean, it's just like four times the size. Yeah, but we're doing that because it makes everything we do helps to make things easier for everybody to lower down the system. Because if it's too difficult, you just don't do it. Sorry, but who's lower down the system than us? It's been a hard day's work, but we've completed it. And as I hope you've seen, we've had a few laughs too. If I'm honest, I used to hate this job when I was younger. Something about handling greasy fleeces all day, stuck with your parents in a confined space, probably. But as the years have passed, coming to Ausgeri has become more and more special. Every task, every day spent with mum and dad working in this beautiful place seems more finite and therefore more and more precious. My dad's health means this is likely to be the last year that he's able to help with this job after more than 40 years doing it. It's a sad thought, but I'm just so glad I captured some of these precious moments on video. I'm going to have to do more writing when we take it down the pier because I haven't got the... Um Please go with me. During Bertie and Catherine's stay on the island, we had an extremely rare visitor. We sometimes get unusual birds here after a bout of strong winds, but none of us have ever seen a woodpecker on the island before. Given there isn't really a single tree on the island, this guy was a long way away from home but it seemed like the wooden fence posts were providing something of a home comfort. In the summer and autumn months, we are often treated to the most incredible evening light. Sunsets here are breathtaking, particularly when the clouds break up the last of the sun's light, turning the sky into an oil painting. Before my dad's illness cruelly weakened his mind, one of his major passions was photography. He would spend hours outside in the evenings with his tripod and camera, taking endless pictures of the developing sky. One day, I'd love to go through his very disorganized yet beautiful collection and make something from it. Towards the end of Bertie and Catherine's stay, my uncle Piers came to visit from Australia. Sadly, I never met my dad's parents, as they both died before I was born, and my other uncle Sean died some years ago. So it's very special to have some time with Piers on the island every few years when he's able to make the long trip. Let's have some more with all the light on all of our faces. Sometimes, when I'm back in my flat in the city of Cardiff in Wales, I think longingly of the view from the front garden in Ausgeri. When Dad moved here in the 70s, there was nothing between the old stone bothy that he lived in and the North Sea. If it wasn't for my mum's dry stone dike building skills, we wouldn't have this beautiful garden protected from the sea. Every evening we spend out here looking out to sea and enjoying the sky, we reap the rewards of all the effort we've put into this garden, masterminded by my mum. Thanks for your company on this episode. It really means a lot to share our way of life with you all around the world. Please do like this video and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.